This is the story of Valentin Strasser from Sierra Leone, who at the age of 25 found himself as the newly installed leader of a nation of then 4 million people and commander-in-chief of a fictitious and impoverished army. He and his crony seized power in a military coup in 1992 and Strasser ruled for four years until he was deposed by another coup. How this 25-year-old came to be a head of state is unusual even by the experience of African dictatorships. In today's episode, we'll look at Captain Valentin Strasser's improbable rise to executive power and his set fall into abject poverty. Valentin Strasser was born on the 26th of April 1967 in Freetown, the capital city of Sierra Leone. Strasser grew up in the neighborhood of Allentown in the extreme east of Freetown. He completed his secondary school at the Sierra Leone Grammar School in Freetown and graduated in 1985, aged 18. Upon graduating from secondary school in 1985, he enlisted in the Republic of Sierra Leone military forces and he was deployed for military training as a cadet officer at the Benguma Military Training Academy in Benguma, a town located just outside Freetown. At this stage, he had probably never imagined that at some point he would become the world's youngest leader. After his training, he was commissioned into the Sierra Leone Army at a young age of 19. Strasser was then posted to military barracks in the eastern part of Sierra Leone. As an army officer, Valentin Strasser was sent to serve in neighboring Liberia as part of a regional peacekeeping mission called Ecomog. In 1989, civil war had broken out in Liberia and in 1991, Ecomogs were attempting to secure order in the capital of Liberia, Monrovia. After several months in Liberia, Strasser returned home to Sierra Leone, but the war followed him. In 1991, rebel fighters crossed over from Liberia into the remote eastern part of the country of Sierra Leone. This incursion of as many as 2,000 men, most of whom were on loan from the Liberian warlord Charles Silo, marks the beginning of Sierra Leone's decade-long conflict. However, the conditions for the government troops were wretched. Logistical support was poor. Supply of weapons and ammunition were limited, and there was a scarce medical provision meaning they were fighting a war that their political masters would not resource properly. Strasser and other junior officers began plotting a coup. On the 29th April 1992, they launched Operation Daybreak, raiding the office of the president in central Freetown, as well as the lavish old presidential lodge of Sporod in the west end of the city. They found the then president, Joseph Saidu Momo, hiding in the bathroom of the lodge wearing a dressing gown. He was bundled into an army helicopter and taken over the border to Guinea. From this series of events, Valentin Strasser emerged as the public face of the uprising, in part because of his language skills. He spoke English well enough to read artist statements on the radio. As a captain, he was also of a higher rank than his co-conspirators. Some argue too that Strasser got a top post because those around him felt that he could be manipulated easily. And just like that, he became the world's youngest head of state just three days after his 25th birthday. In the early days, Captain Strasser coup was very popular. There were promises of a fresh start for the country. After more than two decades of corrupt government, most people from Sierra Leone welcomed the coup makers and Strasser was catapulted to messiah status. Graffiti artists flood Freetown with his portraits and those of his fellow junta members. There were great plans to install a functioning democracy. The soldiers launched a cleanup campaign to clean the street of mountain of trash, often joining in themselves. The economy was also on the apex. Gas and electricity were once again available. Ambulances, which had all but disappeared from Freetown, were imported and put to use again. The new ruler of Sierra Leone called themselves the National Provisional Ruling Council, NPRC. Strasser was the council's chairman. The inner circle was made up of equally young men, including a vice chairman who was barely 22 years old. For all the jubilation that was occurring after the coup, there was still heavy fighting in the country. Out in the bush, the army continued fighting the rebels. During Strasser's administration, 
the civil war escalated with the rebels increasing the amount of territory under their control, including lucrative diamond mines, which were the source of the blood diamonds used to fund their activities. They were also disturbing reports of atrocities committed against the civilian population, not only by the rebel forces, but also by some government troops. During this war, civilians were subject to horrific acts of mutilation, including having their limbs, ears, and lips cut off. Incidents of rape and forced labor were widespread, and many civilians were used as unwilling human shields as they are held in captivity, subjected to a repeated act of sexual violence by the combatant. Forced conspiration into the army was pervasive and made many civilians, including children, unwilling participants in the conflict. Meanwhile, back in Freetown, Strasser and his cronies really put on a show. For the outset, their rule was packed with the kind of behaviors that you would expect from leaders their age. They attended government meetings in sunglasses and shady suits. On one occasion, Strasser addressed a stage funeral in the National Cathedral wearing aviator sunglasses. On another occasion, he turned up to a Commonwealth summit in Cyprus, during which Sierra Leone's return to democracy was a key discussion point. At this summit, he was wearing a t-shirt with the following words, Return sunny days inside Cyprus. Well, a day, he was reportedly too shy to attend a proposed meeting with Queen Elizabeth. But in all, life seemed too good for Strasser and his friends. This was a rags to riches story. But what would follow after his demise would be a sad riches to rags story. We'll touch on this very soon. In January of 1996, just a few weeks before a proposed presidential election, Valentin Strasser went to a routine government meeting that was also attended by his second in command, Julius Madabio. According to his own retelling of the story, he entered the meeting room without his armed security detail. So there was nothing he could do when Julius Madabio threw a gun from under the table and pointed it at him. Strasser was bundled just as his predecessor has been into a helicopter and flown to neighboring Guinea. It is said that what motivated the coup d'etat against Strasser was the fear that he would not transfer power to a civilian government as originally promised. Strasser's successor was the leader of the second coup, Julius Madabio, who is the current president of the Republic of Sierra Leone. This new leader was only in his 30s, but unfortunately, the story of Africa's youngest president does not end here. What would follow for Valentin Strasser after him being deposed from power would be a series of unfortunate events that would lead him to being driven to abject poverty. Immediately after the coup, the United Nations, anxious to get Strasser out of West Africa, arranged for him to study at Warwick University in the United Kingdom. Unfortunately for him, while in the United Kingdom, he was treated with great disregard, though his rule was unremarkable according to African dictator's standard. British newspaper ran scanty headlines calling him the butcher of Sierra Leone for reasons unknown. He stopped his studies after a year and went to London, where some Sierra Leoneans in the UK abused him in clubs. Already his wife had left him and he became a roaming nomad, wandering from place to place in search of his solace. He left for the Gambia in the year 2000, only to have his entry to the country denied. That same year, he returned to Sierra Leone and moved back home to live with his mother, where he was reportedly living a rather poor life, not expected of a retired leader. It's even tougher considering that he was a former military leader and was at the pinnacle of power. It is believed that his chronicle of multifaceted, unfortunate and stressful events were enough to assert his sanity and to throw him out of mental balance. In January of 2009, he fell gravely ill and was flown to Ghana for treatment. He has returned back to Sierra Leone with an amputated leg. And this time, his former coup comrade, who is now the current president of Sierra Leone, built him a house on behalf of the government that is befitting to a former leader. This has been the story of Valentin Strasser, Africa's youngest president. If you are new here and interested in similar content, then don't be shy to press the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you won't miss any of our uploads. Also, don't forget to like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.
Until next time. Thank you.